Hello guys, Deb here with Art and Grace. Come on in, let me know you're here. I'm gonna get this pulled up so I can see comments better. Okay, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Come on in. I always feel like you guys are just coming into my room here. Come on in. Hello, Tracy Campbell, how are you? Okay, good. And the, my link didn't work again. Okay, Tracy, <laughs> you're gonna have to help me with pinning the link down here because I had our link pinned and it's not there. Darn. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Terry. Hi, Cynthia. Come on in. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Anna. I love seeing you guys pop in. So my name is Deb. I own Art and Grace. I'm so grateful to be included in this great event. So many talented crafters and creators. Laveda, thank you for the stars. Hi, Zena. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Hello, Daryl. Cynthia, how's Jerry today? Hi, Shelly Ann. Hi, Patty. Hope I'm not missing anybody. Hi, Tamara. Okay, guys, so help me get the word out. I hi, Stephanie. There she is. Glad you're here. Of course, you'd be here, but I know it's a big, busy day for you. I appreciate you and Cynthia and anybody, or um, Christina, anybody else who's involved in putting this together. What a fantastic event. Thank you to Tracy Campbell with Craft Around the Clock for putting it in there. We just really appreciate everybody being here to support us. Shelly says VP, VIP in the house. Awesome. Woohoo. Hello, Melissa. Okay, guys, we're going to get started. I have this beautiful beaded frame. It's wood that came from Hobby Lobby. You guys have probably seen them. It's $14.99, but of course, you know you can get it on sale, which I did. Hello, Terry. How are you? Oh, it's been so good already. Hi, Sandra. I see I cannot hardly stand to not Say hi to everybody. So friends, and especially my VIP ladies, if you will greet people for me, because it just bothers me to not be able to sit and say hi to y'all coming in. But what I did, I just, they had the hangers going this way. So I took those off and put them this way. So we're going to do our design long ways. And we're gonna get started because I, I really wanna get through this, show you guys how easy it is to paint and create if you've never painted before, you can paint this. So hang with me and let me show you. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Robin. Oh, I do. I appreciate so much getting included in these events. I always feel a little like, wow, the talent here is amazing. So thank you so much for inviting me and I'm humbled to be here. So we're going to do a background and I want, you know, it's a woodland winter theme. So I'm going with some, oops, let me get my paper towel here. I'm going with some, um, you know, a prettier sky. Okay, so here's how I feel about this. Christmas, when we put away our beautiful red and green and whatever we're using, and I have a lot of burgundy and a lot of gold, um, you know, your house starts to look drab and you're just like, you know, where... We need, we need stuff. So this will be something really good to kind of fill those spots where you're used to seeing color. Um, I'm just, I'm using basic colors. So guys, promise you can do this. I'm putting a lot of white and just a touch of blue on my brush. And I'm gonna come in here and get a background going. I like doing skies, kind of doing a mixture or a uneven like not a solid blue so i'm just doing every which way doing kind of an x motions is a great way to describe it or to do it to get your background on so already you see you can do this if you can hold a brush then you can get your background on i'm going to kind of go neatly around the edges and then go back and x it out right here so that i want my brush strokes to be uneven and whimsical. My type of art that I love and teach is whimsical paintings. So things that make you happy, things that add color into your space. And you know, I always say a lot of, well, the, the vast majority of my art I don't put out in the living room, but today this is one that you can. 
so it's going to be an easy one that also is very pretty you could paint this for the, somebody and give it as a gift you could um, if you're in the VIP group you can paint it and sell it you could paint it and teach or teach others how to paint it you know so, but if you're just a watcher just you know kind of enjoying this paint it for yourself paint it for your family things like that you can make cards with this it's just a sweet little design so just getting my background on and hopefully y'all are starting to see some of the paint marks the texture that it gives to do this lots of way for you to do a background you can take a sponge and just kind of sponge so that it's a really I don't know is modeled the right word um, you know but textured look lots of ways and then I'm gonna get this dry so that we can move on to the next step but I hope you guys are like oh well so far I can do that that's my favorite thing is when people think they can't paint and then they find out they can't okay while this is drying I get to talk to y'all hi Sarah hi Cheryl yes oh so many good ones today I've missed a few getting ready for today and I'll tell a secret I uh, ditched my plan last minute and am doing something different because sweet Lindy with Tater Vegan, she did literally almost exactly what I was going to paint. I don't know if I have my little design anywhere handy, but I had sketched out trees and this background and a deer to paint. So I was like, oh, not going to work. I could have done it, but I, you know, give everybody their thing and, and I'll do something else because there's plenty of things to paint. Hi Crafty Queens, thank you. I'm using uh, just basic colors on purpose so that you guys know you don't have to buy a lot of stuff. Get your basics. These are DecoArt Americana Acrylics. I have Royal Navy, a white. I use Snow White usually. And that's all we've used so far. Okay. Aw, thank you, Zena. We have had so much fun. Thank you, Monica. Did you get into the group yet, the word of the year? Because I saw that you you got that class, and I believe I sent you an email, but I hadn't seen you in there, so just checking while that popped in my brain. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. Y'all are so kind to me. Don't deserve y'all. Hi, Sussy. Oh, dear. Did y'all see that? Ooh, we're going to have to... I'm sure the plug's just about to come out or something. Okay, so I actually think I want a little more, a little more white in here. So hold on, hold please. I know Stephanie says hold please, but I do too. So hold on, I'm gonna add some more color and some more white because it really did need a second coat. And so let's do this real quick. I don't want to spend a long time on the background. I want to spend my time painting this bird. We're going to do a finch today, a bull finch. Do you guys know what that is? I mean, it's just a, a fat little finch bird. But birds have always been a, a thing that I love. And I know one day when I'm retired and hopefully ha live somewhere where I can sit outside and I will be a bird watcher because I love them. I love to hear them sing. Um, we, you know, tend to get usually some birds that come back every day. You know, if you feed them, they'll just kind of keep coming back to you. And I just love it. So, you know, Winter Wonderland, my first thought, I mean, I've gone through several things in my head, like a moose, a deer, a, a fox, you know, several things I kept thinking I was going to do. And nothing was really speaking to me until the deer and then I decided to change it and then I was like it's got to be a bird I love birds and that is a good transition a bird is a good transition from winter into spring so you can leave this up quite a while and of course if you do your colors different I'm gonna do like a winter colors but if you hi Christina rest covered cottage if you do your colors in other colors your favorite colors then you can totally leave this out year round you know or uh, put it out as soon as Christmas is over or something like that hello Tamara you love finches oh so you should paint this Sheila I do yes Anna I know they're so sweet and 
it's a good reminder that God cares about the birds of the air and he doesn't let them fall without him knowing and he provides food for them every day so y'all that's the best reminder so this is actually a really good one so I'm glad I changed my plan because it just is a good reminder for all of us right okay so let me sketch this little bird out um, I'm gonna use a chalk pencil I'm gonna turn it toward me for just a second I'll be sure that's good and dry and sketch this out real fast so they've got kind of a smaller head and a big belly and I tend to make these really big you know I'm a little extra there in the tummy so my bird can be too right we are beautiful and special regardless of our waist size people okay let's see let me just give me one second we're almost done pretty good okay I can live with this so I'm gonna draw kind of a little tree branch right here now I don't know if y'all can see this let's see can y'all see that <laughs> but that's what it looks like yes I actually was gonna dress I have a really pretty gray like sweatshirt with a deer on it in sequins and that's what I've had picked out to wear and it's so hot in Texas. It's like 70 degrees today and I'm burning up in this house. We've had the door open some, but um, you know, gosh, it's hot. I have my fan on me down here and I was like, I can't do it. I went just flying in there going, I can't sit in here with all these lights and this shirt on. I just was already, my face was sweating, you know. I was like, so I was a minute, and I forgive me, Stephanie, because I know you were probably waiting on me to get on and I was a minute late trying to switch it into something else oh absolutely Sandra yes I'm getting out primary red I've got black oh I just did I put out brown or maybe I didn't yeah I put out black so I put out lamp black primary red this is bittersweet chocolate all deco art um, you know I've got a an Amazon store that had or storefront that has all of my favorite supplies so if you ever wonder you know what was she using or what colors were those you can look there you can always ask me I'll tell you um, the ladies I'm pulling these out of my water from earlier um, but the ladies in my group get all the colors and they get a tracer for everything that I paint so um, they have it made in there I think for that okay so I'm taking some brown on my round brush that bittersweet chocolate and we're just gonna start with it a little wider here at the at the edge here and I'm doing this first so that I can kind of come around my little bird right here and try not to get in there and then we'll paint that bird and then I want to bring it over here he's on a big one that's a tight huge branch for a little bird but of course you know when you see any of us doing things you can totally tweak the design and make it yours right we love to inspire you guys and then we'll do a few more um let's kind of have a little bit of tree showing down that edge and maybe up here and then we will put more branches coming out always a little bigger at the base of the tree and then getting thinner as you go and i need a smaller uh, brush I'm really pushing it with this giant brush but I am trying to hurry let me switch it's just too big too big hold please hi Lisa how are you today any news with Silas or is he still doing good pretty good anyway thank you guys so much for being here we love we love events and collaborating together as crafty sisters and friends and brothers and um 
So we appreciate when you guys show up and you enjoy it too. That just makes us so happy. This is a little difficult. I'm not going to lie, doing it upside down because I can't really get my bearings on the tree very well, but you know, it's okay. Uh, my art, I stress highly that it does not need to be perfect. This type of art is for you to relax and have fun and explore and, you know, really just, it's just, you know, for you. So never be embarrassed of your art. I know a lot of people don't understand the concept of fun, whimsical art, but it is so, so good. Can y'all see? Okay. So, so good to do creative things. It completely resets your brain. And it has been proven, you can do the research, you see the research, that just about 45 minutes of art lowers your blood pressure. So doing art every day, even if it's just 15 minutes, you know, will, will help. So guys, don't stop taking your lisinopril or whatever, but I'm telling you, it totally works. It really does. I started really getting into art full time when my mom had Alzheimer's and I did not have one spare minute. But during a prayer time, it was like God was just leading me to it. And I kind of thought it was weird, but I did it. I'm very try to, you know, so I went and I had, you know, used to have some art supplies, not tons, but I went and got, you know, a few things. I got a journal, like a mixed media journal. And I got, you know, some basic paints and paintbrushes and started doing art journaling. So painting in my art journal. And, um, and that's how it started. And then it was so helpful. And having that time to myself where nobody bothered me, nobody interrupted. Um, and I could actually sit and pray while I painted and just have some me time. Uh, it it just changed so much for me. It just really did reduce stress. And I got to where I was just like doing everything I could so that I could have that 30 or 45 minutes to paint. You know, you're like, okay, well, if I do this and then do that on my lunch break, then I can, you know, um, hello, three little birds paintings. You're hilarious, man. You've got some kind of personality. I know I'm, um, Everybody says, oh, you're so relaxing to watch. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm boring. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, it just changed my life. So after my mom passed away, you know, so many of us kind of go through a thing where you're like, what am I doing in this corporate job? Why am I working for people who don't care about me? And who, you know, you're just, all you're doing is trying to build their business and they don't care. So I, after a lot of prayer, took a big leap and quit my job and went and did paint parties, in-person paint parties until COVID shut them down. And then I went online and started doing it online. And now I've just never been happier. Of course, that's not everybody's trajectory and it wasn't even mine, but it wasn't planned. I need to kind of hold on, hold please. Yes, it does. It does so much. Um, okay, so my tree is too small. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. It's just a little tougher upside down. You guys, I'm just a little challenged on this sometimes when I'm, when you can't see it really for yourself, it's a little harder. So, hi Sheila, good to see you girl. How are you? I just, I love seeing everybody pop in and I just want to be like, how's LJ? What's going on? You know, because we don't get to chit chat as much as we want to. So you guys, when you come in here, check on each other, see how everybody's doing, ask them about their day. And, you know, um, it's such, this is such a great community of people that so many truly do care about you. And when you're not here, we notice and um, of course, it's okay. There's a million things going on in everybody's life and on the internet. So, I don't know. I may make that tree bigger later because that's a big branch. 
I just think I'm going to go ahead. I don't want to run out of time. Here's, here's the thing. I was going to put glass and resin on this. I'm just not going to keep trying to do that. That, that was a lofty goal. And if I can just only paint it, then we'll be in much better shape. So let's just ditch that, that for now. I will do that another day. So be sure you follow me if you enjoy easy art and I do resin art, glass art. Um, let's see, lots of paintings, some crafts. I want this to be a pretty, you know, one of those kind of dry, wiry looking trees. Y'all doing okay? <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Well, obviously I'm struggling today. I don't know why I've painted trees a million times. My ladies could tell you. I know how to paint a tree. It's just for some reason upside down on this round surface. It's just not, uh, I don't know, I, I really need to look at it, but I'm okay. It's okay. If nothing else, I'm teaching you guys that things that are imperfect can still be pretty. Once we get our bird on here, it is going to take a new life of its own. So that bird has personality. Just making some of these bigger And then just kind of pick up your brush when you're getting to the edge there or to the end of the branch. Okay, let's go on and start our bird. Thank you, Cynthia. Oh, do you, Rachel? Thank you so much. I'm just going to a little bit smaller round brush and we're going to work on our bird. And again, I am using colors that I will go back and do some glass art with later. So this is where you can make it your own. You can use whatever colors you want to use. So I'm coming down here with black and that's the tip of the tail here. And I'm just bringing that black up. And then again, for the other part of her tail, I'm saying her, I don't know. Sometimes the boys are the ones that are pretty. So this is probably a boy bird, isn't it? Um, have y'all seen that and noticed that? It's funny. But they have to do the impressing of the girls, so. So there's that long tail. And then I'll bring it up to about here. And then I'm going to start doing some charcoal color. So all you're doing is taking your black and adding some white and getting a gray, dark gray. So just mix in on that palette. Well, Christina, I don't know, but sometimes I have to fix them. You know, they're not perfect. I am just bringing this charcoal up in here, up into the belly. This right here is going to be a pretty red. Did I say red? No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, please. That is going to be a... I'm messing up. I forgot. I forgot. Hold on. Hold on. Hold please. I really want to fix this. I need to calm down. I'm feeling just so rushed and I shouldn't. Okay. This is going to be a red belly. This part is charcoal. So that's, I was okay. So this wing here, and we're going to define the wing in a second. So this is just basically our first layer. Acrylic painting loves layers. So just like that. And then the head's going to be black again. So I'm going to kind of clean this off just in a paper towel. You don't have to really clean it. Just go to, you know, wipe it in a paper towel. Get black back on your brush. And come around and do her head or his. It's really weird. I'm looking upside down at it and just kind of. 
so I will take my little brush and just kind of wisp it in like so and that's giving that feathered look that's going on top of that gray wing and I'll hold this up in just one second Hold, please. Oh, thanks, Patty. So you see how it goes over that gray part of the wing? Oh, hi, Brooke. How are you feeling today? Thank you guys for being here. Okay, so now I'm going to pop right into my red. This is a primary red. Yes, primary red. Any red that you have will work. And we're going to paint this belly. I'm giving her or him a big belly. You guys go ahead and comment if you have questions or if you have, you know, whatever, let me know because I will go back and read comments. I'll see it. Um, say hi to me so I know you were here. That's one of the big ones. I love to see who was here live. Um, so do that. Say hey. Let me just take a look at it and see. I like a big belly on this little bird. I think it's cute. I'm going to do one more pass and then I'll turn it back toward y'all. Oh, I'm getting gray in it because I'm not waiting to, uh, to keep going or to dry it. So I'm just going to wipe that off. And it's totally okay because like I said acrylic paint loves layers so all it does is add to the character so you don't have to worry about whimsical art looking like something out of a magazine it's just fun and everybody's gonna know what it is when they see it it's gonna come together you have to go through the ugly process first okay so Okay, they actually have a black beak, so I'm going to get some black. Is this black? Yes. And do a little more right here on the beak. But we are going to make that beak kind of stand out. I'm going to give it a little hump, so just a little curve to the top. But it's just a little triangle, basically. And then I'm going to take this black and go down into my little chest right there. Just kind of feather that out. Just like I feathered it over here. And then I'm going to take a little black with just a dot of white. And it's going to give me a little bit lighter, dark charcoal, I guess. And we're going to kind of just give this a little bit of a highlight right around the top of the head. And we'll do it down the feathers like so just give it a little bit of something something we have new friends in the house I'm glad you're here please give me another chance because I can do a tree this tree looks terrible <laughs> but I can do a tree um, but that's okay I'm going with it because we we don't have lots of time I am going to take my brown and add a little bit of white to it and get a lighter brown and you know you can always just add a dot of red you know change your browns up so that you can have you want a dark a medium and a light and I'm just gonna put some of this kind of give these branches some highlights I'm going really fast. I'm not going to worry about it too much because this is whimsical fun art and doesn't have to be perfect. I am going to go back and fix this tree though. I'm not going to leave it this way. Thank you for sharing the blessing. That just, I appreciate you guys sprinkling us out there. And you know, when you sprinkle one of us, then hopefully 
new people get to see. Maybe they're going to try art. Maybe I always feel like, you know, for me, I really love to help women and I love to help women who are under a lot of stress or who, you know, um, just need a place to feel at home. And that's kind of what I'm about. And so, you know, you may, this may not be for you, but you may share it and somebody sees it and is like, oh, that's perfect. I need that, you know, or I need to learn how to do that or whatever. And then somebody else, they have a different mission. They have a different thing that they want to help people with. And so, um, you know, sprinkle us out there and let's get a lot of people into that chuffed berry group and also into craft around the clock if they're not in there. I'm going to come back with a little bit of light gray and kind of, um, oh, I did that wrong. No, I didn't. That's right. Oh gosh, that scared me. Kind of give this feather a more of a curved look like this. I was like, did I go the wrong See, something about upside down today is not working for me. So I was like, I went the wrong way, but no, I didn't. This is right. That's a straight back. Putting a little bit of that lighter gray on top. And then I'm just touching my brush down in white. I'm not, you know, cleaning it or anything, but I'm going to put, actually, I got a little red on that. Hold, please. In just a little white and kind of give this... Now I'm just kind of blending that red in there. It's okay though. I like the red in it. So you don't have to ever worry. I typically will take a little bit of color and put it in unexpected places. So like a little bit, little bit of red dry brushed into my tree. So, um, you know, don't feel like, oh, I made a mistake because actually it can be a really good thing sometimes, you know, you may not have even realized you needed a little bit of something something there so I'm going to come and give this beak a little highlight and just kind of set it out from the from the rest of the bird so for the eye I'm taking that charcoal and I'm going to put down just a little circle and then I'm going to come back with black and put a little dot so we don't want a big gray eye can y'all see that And then taking this tip of this brush, I'm going to barely, barely get a little bit of white on there. And if you think you have too much, just take it off and just have a little tiny bit. And, and if you don't have any detail brushes like these, you can use a toothpick for this part. And just give a little, little dot right there in the eye. Okay. And then I think while I have this, I am going to use this and kind of straighten out her back like so but you just keep working with it and you know as you add something you might have to go back and I'm going to feather again into this but lots of layers will make it look so much better I think I like the way it's looking how much time do we have Oh goodness, I could just, oh, I just almost could have done resin if I had really, oh, you know what I could do? I know what I could do. Let's see. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. So we see what this is kind of looking like. I'm going to abort this one and take my, the one I painted earlier. When I changed my project, I was like, oh dear. This is what I painted earlier. So it's a six by six. And all I did that I haven't shown you is adding snow on top of the branches. And I do take my brush at the very end and dry brush. So I just take it and kind of dry brush. This is just red and white mixed to give it just a little bit of highlight. And that's it. And I bring my tree on the side. I like something on the side. Let's do it on this one. Didn't think about that, but we can just kind of abort that one. It wasn't really the prettiest I've ever done anyway. So I can finish that another time. And I will get to show you guys how fun it is to add glass. So I'm getting this silver glass here. And actually, I think I'm gonna use, I'll use this. Hmm, which one do I wanna use? Yeah, I'll use one of these. So for the beak, 
I wanted to set it at, apart so I pulled out some of these that pieces of glass that are in a triangle shape can y'all see that I'm really not going to be able to um, probably talk as much as I would like to so I have tons of tutorials though where you can see this process and uh, love teaching glass art so if you're interested in that um, you want to get in the VIP group my monthly membership or uh, watch some YouTube tutorials that I have they're just not as comprehensive as I go in the VIP group or if you take one of my classes I've got a really good cardinal class so I'm just trying to find the right one for the beak this is a good one that's a good one we'll use that one and then take your glass uh, here it is I knew I had it we're gonna put this glass all over this little bird I'm gonna use these bigger pieces for the head and look for curved pieces because her little head is curved so just kind of see what fits Let me know if you have tried glass art, if you, um, you know, always like to know if people are interested in it or if they, they're like, yeah, not my thing. I just love teaching it because it is so fun. It really gives your art, you know, a pop. And of course you can use it on lots of things besides art. That's a really good one. I'm saving that piece. That's a, that was definitely a, a a beak shape so I am just placing these on here kind of like a jigsaw puzzle oh man I messed that up my big fingers and kind of getting this built up I do want a little silver piece for her eye and I'm gonna look for something kind of small why don't I use I'll just use this silver are y'all okay? Never heard of glass art? Oh my goodness. Oh, I love it so much. I'm going to put down this little kind of silver piece there for her eye. So this is the part that I really enjoy is picking out these pieces. So when you get glass art, you know, it comes in all kinds of shapes and whatever because they break it up for us when we buy it. And then you can have the fun of putting it on however you want to. So for the wing, you know, uh, you can dump it is here. Let me just show you the dump method is like that. You just dump it and then kind of keep it within the boundary that we had. So like so. And dump method is really fun because you're you that's literally you don't have to have any skill or talent you're just dumping it dumping it down like so and you can put it as high as you want to I like to put my larger pieces on the bottom and then kind of add a few little ones on top typically like so and then for our tail we can just kind of start laying down some pieces down here I'm probably not going to get to the resin. I, I knew that was going to be a long shot. <laughs> Deb, you need to dump it. Yeah, I know. You're right. Uh, yes, dumping it is a really quick, super quick, easy way to do it but I love being meticulous and picking out the pieces I want, you know, out of what I have. I mean, you know, it's within reason. It's not going to be perfect, but like if I have a pointy one, that's perfect for the little tail. And so I'll put that right there and then I'll look kind of for another pointy one and put that for the other tip and like so. And then yes, we can kind of dump on the rest. It is definitely a time saver to dump it. Like so.
and then we've got red for the belly. I get my glass uh, a couple of places. If you're in the VIP group, I tell you exactly where, give you links. If you, you know, want to purchase a kit from me, you get a discount. If I have a class that I'm teaching that I charge for, it's free for the VIP members. So if you're interested in art and glass art and painting and things, um, then that would be probably the best way to go. It's only 18 a month. It's not expensive, but you get a lot for that 18 and discounts on everything is what I think is great. Um, but I get, but I, so I tell them everything they get, they don't, there's no secrets. Um, I'm a little more careful, you know, with, because I want them to have the benefits of being in the VIP group. Um, so that's really all I need to do. Let's see. Come on. I have like, I want to know exactly. I have four minutes. Yeah, I don't have time to do the resin. But that's what it will look like. And then have a gorgeous, shiny, glass-like coat on top. And it is so pretty. If you've never, I wish I could get y'all a better picture. If you've never seen glass art done, it's so fun to watch from start to finish. Let me show you a cardinal. If I have it. Oh, I do. I've been taking away all of my Christmas stuff. I need to redo this cardinal on a branch instead of Christmas, but this is what it looks like with the resin on it. And let's see if you can see the raised glass. See that? It's so pretty once it's all finished and I just love teaching this. So if you're interested, you'll have to watch either my YouTube or I've got some on Facebook, but this is the funnest stuff because it really elevates your art. You saw what the painting is like without it. And then once you get that and the resin on, it's just gorgeous. Of course, it's not for everybody. So I do teach the paintings, you know, step by step so that anybody can do those if that's all they want to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Patty. I do have art kits on my website. Um, I know, Stephanie, I'm sorry I didn't have time. 45 minutes is, I can do one of these in 45 if I'm like busting it. But I talk too much and yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry I didn't get to, you know, finish that off. But I do love how this little bird turned out. And you can see it will be super cute with the glass. If anybody does want a kit, I will, um, you know, obviously finish it and put those on my website. Uh, so let me know if you want one. It'd be, I will only have a limited number. I don't, you know, just do these all the, so I'll make like 20 kits and when they're gone, they're gone. So thank you, Christy. How do you get the resin to not overflow the sides? So I use art resin and it's a one-to-one -one mixture and I will pour it on. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I have lots of tutorials, so you'll have to just watch one, but I pour it on and then just kind of bring it to the edge with the stick. And then with a gloved finger, I kind of just bring it right to the edge, but I don't go over. And I really have lately started just going ahead and taking that gloved finger, dipping it in resin and going ahead and doing the sides with it uh, because it makes them really shiny and it's pretty. So this, I always bring, bring the design onto the side. That's kind of one of my things. And so I do enjoy putting the resin on that. It makes it really shiny. But if you don't want to use resin, you can use triple thick on your art and it gives it a really, really pretty glassy finish as well. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, you know, I don't go over the edge, but sometimes I do, but I never use so much resin that it drips. Like you do have to elevate your work when you're done to let it cure. Um, but I don't want it to drip onto my table or whatever's below me. So I don't overuse resin. So all of that, you know, you can learn from me, um, you know, in the VIP group and you can watch some of my tutorials, but thank you guys so much for being here. Please go up to the description in this video and click on Chuffed Berry group so that you can get in there and watch all the creators today and any that you might have missed. And also in Craft Around the Clock, it's in both groups. You guys have a great day and I'll show you the finish when I'm done. Thank you guys, bye-bye.